policeman. And I've got nothing to do with this film at all. Just watch it. Man, through the ages, has adorned himself with a variety of styles. One may even go so far as to say that man has been obsessed with fashion. I am a cowboy, and I wear this here cowboy hat to protect my head from the sun. My hat signify my rank. You are very important, aren't you? One must meet the demands of the local conditions, what? Oh, these flies, they're everywhere. Okay, well, sorry, but the place has changed. What's happened to the sandpans? My very position in society demands that I keep abreast of the latest in changing fashion. <laughs> Good evening. I am a psychiatrist. We have only a few moments of my valuable time. But even this is enough for me to explain to you the psychological aspects of all fashion and design. <laughs> I am going to analyze this for you. All these fashions come from a combination of practical design and inner psychological needs. Let us consider the human brain. <laughs> the wrong chart. Excuse me. <clears throat> Deep in the human brain lies the psychological reasons behind all style and fashion. Ah, mein Lieber, I'm late. I will return. Well, what I'm trying to say is purely and simply that it's one's status and one's personal taste, as well as current fashion, you know, great style. Now, the people who invented these early vehicles were they're much more concerned with just making the things go. Yes, these uh, horseless experiments and um, the shape reflects the groping of the experimenter's mind. Ah, oh, yes, an early British model. Uh, this was the age of steam. Many vehicles retain the horse and carriage look still, you know. Uh, uh, having disposed of the horse. <laughs> Got rid of it. <laughs> oh, I say. Now, now look, now look, now look. Here's another grand old steam vehicle. Uh, look at that. Do you see it? In, here, in front of you there, yes. But uh, steam engines were cumbersome, you know. Big things. <laughs> But then they invented the petrol engine, which is a much smaller device, and uh, one was able to design, naturally, a much smaller vehicle. Designers took even the weather into consideration, you know. Oh, my. They, 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 they built cars of a more practical shape and size. And of course, as the engines developed, the appearance changed to the shape of the car as we know it. From this, the car developed in two different ways. Two different ways, you see. The family car and um, uh, the racing car, yes. Ha-ha! The family car and the racing car. Now, here is the most interesting point in this whole film. There is one big division between all cars. For three months, I have been in this automobile museum studying this whole problem. And the point which comes to light is that all cars are either family cars or racing cars. Consider again the human brain. Here is the brain of the family man. Do you see how large is the loft compartment? 
and here is the brain of the non family man. Do you see how much smaller is the loft compartment? Very significant, isn't it? Earlier on, we saw the division into family and racing cars. Now we have seen the inner psychological reasons lying behind all of this. I, I think you understand us now. Family cars were expensive, large and dignified and became larger, more expensive, and uh, more dignified. On the other hand, the racing car, developed on the track, became faster and shapely, affecting subsequent designs and contributing to the new age. Ah, oh, yes, this is the motoring age. The style has resolved itself. People were offered any style and any color they wanted, provided it was black. Now then, if, uh, if you were choosing a car, uh, which, which one would you choose then? Uh, which one? Hmm? Now, bear in mind that, uh, well, you know, uh, you must think of all your needs. A pink one. You may not realize the significance of the color ink. I see deeply into this. Consider from another point of view the human brain. There are its six compartments in the brain. There is the work compartment, the pleasure compartment, family, personality, taste, and dignity. So first comes work. work. Work, lieber Gott, my students, I'm late, my inner circle of students. <laughs> oi, oi. You had better think about your work. <laughs> <laughs> Young man, I think it's your family you should be thinking about. Personality. Most people are like sheep with no sense of direction. You are so right, mate. It is true. <laughs> My dear, let us uh, stroll up in this direction towards this charming sunken garden for a certain amount of interpersonal exchange. <laughs> Smart people are talking about aesthetics. Who are they? Where are they? How are they? What? Taste, Ducky. Personal taste. <laughs> May I ask you to consider your dignity, sir? May I inquire of your varied needs, your work, pleasure, family, personality, taste and dignity? Which car would you choose? A pink one. <laughs> 